Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to draw and paint this tree peony that I took a reference photo at the Botanical Gardens when I went about two weeks ago and I saw it and I took a photo and I'm like, you know, this is gonna be painted on round watercolor paper. It is just ideal for that. It's like a saucer, you know, it's just perfect for round paper. Now, if you don't have round paper, what you can do is you can take like a plate and like an exacto knife and put the, the like ceramic plate down on your watercolor paper, cut around it very gently, don't go all the way through with an exacto knife and then tear the paper away so you have that deckle edge round paper. So um, this is an eight inch piece of Shizen hot press watercolor paper. I would go with a cold press if you're using like um, a regular traditional Western style watercolor paper because the uh, Indian handmade watercolor papers are just a little bit rougher by nature. So, but if you are ordering it and you wanna try this brand, I do recommend getting the hot press paper because the cold press is quite rough and they also have a rough texture on top of that that you can um, check out. But I would try the hot press paper for this particular project. It wasn't that expensive. I picked this up at Fiddleheads. It was a pack of 10 for about $18. I think Blick has it for about $25 for the pack of 10. So, I mean, as far as 100% cotton watercolor paper goes, it's not too crazy. Now I'm sketching with a black wing uh, matte paper, uh, pencil. It's their softest lead pencil. And I did that so it would show up on camera, but I wouldn't sketch it this darkly um, otherwise. Just kind of keep that in mind. Oh, if you would like a real-time version of this tutorial, you can find it up now in Critique Club. Critique Club is my membership group over in my Teachable School. I'll have a link in the video description. It's $5 a month, and as a member, you have access to all of the tutorials I've posted in the past. There's over 100 real-time, more advanced than what I do on YouTube tutorials, and um, also monthly prompts. And you can upload two paintings a month for critique from me if you're working on something on your own and you just want some feedback. Um, check it out. Link's in the video description you can learn more there and I'd love to have you have a, have a member as a member if that's something that you would find to be useful and if not well just sit back and enjoy the time lapse um, I do have a I did scan my sketch here and I put that up in the critique club group too so you can print that out if you don't wish to draw or you could even print out the reference photo and trace that which would be obviously a little more accurate than my sketch here but um, I like to draw if drawing is fun so I drew it <laughs> We got to do what's fun, right? We got to do what lights us up. So I'm starting off with just a basic overall wash. I wet the back of the paper just to keep it from curling while I did this wet wash on the front of the paper. And then I let it dry completely before going on to this step. I decided that I didn't need to wet the back of the paper any longer just to get that big, um, that big flower area because it was going to be, I wanted to keep the surface tension even on both sides. So wetting the back of the paper accomplishes that. It just does take longer to dry because this is a very absorbent paper, but I just went out back in the, it was a beautiful sunny day when I painted this and I let the, let the sunshine do the work for me. The only time you don't want to speed up the drying time is if you're working with a granulating color and you want to really force that granulation. In that case, you want to let it dry um, slowly and naturally, but Otherwise, yeah, you can take it out in the sun. You can use a heat tool. Just if you use a heat tool, do the front side of the paper and the back side of the paper, and it will even out the tension and keep it from warping. With this paper, what I intend to do is mount this on a colored art paper or a colored mat board, and then I would cut a mat around it. And I would probably mat it to a 12 by 12 frame because those are easy to find because of record albums and scrapbook pages. So here I'm putting in some shadows. I am using the uh, alizarin crimson. I'm using, it's a permanent alizarin. It's not going to fade. Uh, I'm using a little ultramarine blue. I am in, I'm putting a little bit of yellow in there. So the colors I'm using are by Da Vinci. They make some pretty affordable colors. And when I was teaching in group classes, I would buy their 37 ml tubes of watercolor pa paint. They were just an outstanding value. And they still are. They're not quite as cheap as they used to be. But I used to order them from the back of artist magazines because that's how I was introduced to them. And they used to sell a mis mixing set, but I looked and I couldn't find it. Maybe they have it on their website, but I, I checked Blick and Amazon and I couldn't find it there. But they used to sell a mixing set. Maybe they still do. And it would be two versions of your warm and your all your primary colors. And uh, I know Daniel Smith sells a very similar set. That is a wonderful set too. Use what you have. Um, but basically the colors I'm using here are Elizabeth and Crimson, um, 
uh, Alaride Yellow, which is like, a, you could use a cadmium yellow, that's the warmer yellow. I'm using a Hansa Yellow Light, which is my kind of lemony yellow, and I'm using Ultramarine Blue, and also some Sap Green. So I'm mixing from those colors. If you have those in any other brand, it's totally fine. And you don't have to use a, an Alizarin Crimson, you could use a Rose Red, you could use a Quinacridone Rose, you could use a Rose Matter. Basically, you just want a cool pinky red. Um, and that's just, that's what I had from the mixing set from Da Vinci that I bought in the past. And and I liked it. And then I've, I've picked up a few open stock tubes over the years, especially if I needed it for like a really color I use a lot, like an ultramarine or burnt sienna or yellow ochre, something I'm using tons. I like to have that in a big tube. It just saves money per ml. Some colors, you'll never go through a big tube like that. So it doesn't make sense to buy it. I, I think they sell now in eight uh, 14 or 15 and 37 ml tubes if I'm if for, for watercolors. They do have other paints as well, but I'm only familiar with their watercolors. Now, I had a great idea. I thought it didn't pan out like I hoped, but I think it might have to do with this paper being a, a very soft, like a soft handmade paper. I had this great idea that I was going to use a really pale, like lemon yellow colored pencil and I was going to draw the veins in and it was going to resist the watercolor when I went over with this darker glaze but that did not come to pass and I think the reason that didn't work is because this paper is so soft and dentable that when I drew those lines in instead of it just depositing the wax and making a resist it actually dented the the paper and the paint wanted to sink into my lines instead of be resisted by them so that did not work out so well on this paper if you were using arches or any other hardly sized paper like heavily sized paper western made western style paper i think it would work fine sometimes i'll use like a prismacolor clear uh, blending pencil for that but it did not work on this paper because of the nature of it this paper it does have a little bit of a personality to it, and um, it may be a little bit unpredictable. It is a little unpredictable. You, especially when the paper when the paint is wet, it looks very patchy. So that could be a little disconcerting. If you look at that the shadow there, look at that dark area in that petal. See how patchy it looks. But then if you go look at one of the petals that's already dry, it looks a lot smoother. And it's just the nature of this paper. I think this is a 100% cotton rag paper. But I think there, I think it has. Um, it may be recycled like from the leftovers from the garment industry. And so it, I think it's more of a short fiber paper, whereas like your more expensive 100% cotton papers are using, I think they could be using virgin fibers and they're also using longer fibers. So those longer fibers weave in more nicely and they're less likely to pill. They're a more hardy paper and they, um, they tend to size them a little more heavily. So... You know, this 100% this cotton from different mills made differently using different length fibers, using virgin versus um, recycled pulp. It's, it's just going to be different. Even though it's 100% cotton, they're all good papers. They're just going to have different personalities. And the Shizen paper, um, also the Najabi paper that I don't know if that's still made anymore, but I have some of that from Jerry's from years ago. Those papers do have that certain... Um, uh, lighter sized, dentable, more porous, absorbent quality to them. And it's exciting to paint on, I think. But if you're a beginner and you're just trying to you're just trying to find your way with watercolor, I think I would recommend going with a, a Western paper. Now, I will tell you that you can get round watercolor paper. Um, in fact, a watercolor block I really liked that wasn't crazy expensive, that was very um, predictable was the Arteza round 100% cotton watercolor block. It's under 20 bucks. I think it's 15 or 20 sheets and you can find it on Amazon or on the Arteza website, but that's a very predictable, heavily sized 100% cotton round block of paper. You don't have to worry about it buckling because it's sealed on all sides. You just cut the top sheet off when you're done painting on it. I've done a bunch of little paintings on that. I think it's seven and a half inches wide. So Maybe it's six inches. It feels a little bit smaller than this paper I have here. Maybe they don't account the decal in the measurement of the paper. But anyway, that's an excellent paper. And that's the other round paper I would recommend. And uh, yeah, the, the fact that you don't even have to worry about wetting the back or taping it down or anything is, is just really wonderful. So if you're a beginner, I would say go with that Arteza paper versus the um, the Shizen. It's about the same price. And you get more, although you get more sheets with the Arteza. And it's just going to be a little bit more predictable and easier to work on if you're a beginner. But this, I'm telling you, if you like a, if you like a surprising experience when you're watercolor painting, then go for some of those handmade Indian papers. They're affordable and they're kind of exciting, I think.
Now here I'm going in with a soft vinyl eraser. This is from the Dollar Tree. It's actually my favorite white eraser. Um, it's just very gentle and very soft. And I was just hitting especially those the outside edge of my sketch because I use that really soft pencil to sketch with. It's a really dark lead. And, I, and it made some dark lines. But just look at that, just erasing with my pencil, I was able to really lighten up those perimeter lines, which makes it not look completely no line, but it does take down the graphite look, which used to bother me. The graphite lines used to bother me back when I, because I used to, I've, I've, my watercolor journey has been trained very traditionally. You don't use white, you uh, use the white of the paper, um, you get rid of the graphite lines, you try to make it look as if the watercolor was just breathed onto the surface and, you know, was barely touched by the human hand. And I loved that that style for a while, but then I grew to actually love the graphite lines and I love seeing other artists' graphite lines because it was like a roadmap to where they've been and how they created the piece. And I found that really intriguing and really charming. And um, then I'm like, you know, I think my lines are okay. I like the energy of a line drawn in graphite. Uh, but for this piece, I did feel like it was they were a little too heavy on the outside. So white, that soft white eraser from the Dollar Tree did the trick. And you really want to go with a very gentle eraser on this paper. Like I said, it's a short fiber paper and um, you run the risk of damaging it. I don't feel like I had any paper damage on this and I feel like it kept pretty crisp lines and I think that's due to the fact that this is the hot press paper and if you look at the hot press paper, it's hard to see on camera, but if you were like in an art shop and you were able to take these papers out of their package and examine them, the hot press paper almost has a bit of a of a glossy sheen to it, almost like how masa paper has that... Um, that coating on it and I don't know if they have coated it on something because this paper does feel less absorbent than their cold press and rough papers that I've used but it does almost look like it's got a waxy surface to it so it does kind of remind me of masa paper and I think that's that whatever that surface is is helping me keep a nice crisp line and it's also um there is some there is some shift I will tell you there is this paper is very absorbent and I do see a wet to dry shift especially in the wetter washes not so much in these last layers where I'm going in and putting in the veining um but yeah you do I do notice like kind of a wet to dry shift but not as bad as the wet to dry shift I see in their cold press and rough papers so because of that I would say if you do want to dip your toe into the handmade paper realm using one of these hot press papers is going to be a lot easier for you just because it takes out a little bit of the unpredictability that you would get in the um, uh, in the rougher papers. So the brushes that I'm using here are, I started off using my signature brushes with Craft Ammo, but I just purchased this set from Jerry's Autorama. They have it actually cheaper on Amazon, surprisingly. Um, the, the set of Mimic travel brushes. Uh, I bought it because it said it had a size eight round, which I love that size. And it, just going by that size, I thought I knew how big the other ones would be, but they were all smaller than I expected. But they work great for this. And this little flat brush, it's about a quarter inch wide, I'd say, uh, is doing great for this crepey texture that um, I want to get in the peony leaves. By the way, the reference photo, I posted it on my Instagram if you want to uh, to check it out. It's also uh, at a higher resolution in Critique Club. So um, you can print that out if you want to, if that's more com comfortable for you to work with, or you could have it up on the screen. You got to do what you got to do, right? Do what's best for you. We're all different. I never would use my phone for reference images, you know, five years ago. Now I use my phone all the time for re reference images. I'll be doing like the food paint challenge or the liquid paint challenge or something. And I'll just screenshot the reference image and I'll work from that. And, you know, I've become way less particular. I've been way, I'm way more easygoing now in my painting journey than I was, you know, 20 years ago, because I don't think I need to fuss with the rules too much. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to make myself happy. I'm going to make art that I'm pleased with. And if I can inspire others along the way, then I want to do that. And I think one of the ways you inspire others is by lightening up and letting them know it's okay to, you know, get to the result any way you can, right? Get, get there in the way that's best for you. We're not all on the same path. We're on different paths. Maybe you just started painting a year ago and you're frustrated that your drawing skills aren't up to par. Well, take the sketch and transfer it and practice your painting. That's enough to have on your plate when you're a beginner. Um, maybe you just want to draw and you don't want to deal with the color. Then learn to draw. That is excellent. Learning to draw will help your your art no matter what you decide to choose as a medium. It's It will do nothing but help you. But if you're not wanting to or you've got an hour to paint a week and that is it you might want to just get that sketch and 
already done, trace it, and then just get into the painting. And I'm not going to judge you. There's no, this, nobody needs to be judging anybody about how they choose to approach their art. We just need to mind our own business and do what's best for us. And we need to support others. As a teacher, I'm here to support you on your journey. However, you want to get to that end result, I'm here to support you. And hopefully keep you from, you know, taking longer at that journey than you need to. Hopefully learning things right the first time so you can have less pitfalls and less you know, backward slides as you're going along. So one thing I will recommend is when you are doing detail work, make sure your paper's real dry before you go on to the next layer. If you want to put a crisp line on, you want dry paper. If you're going to go in with colored pencil or pen, you want that paper bone dry or you'll damage your pens or you'll damage your paper. So just keep that in mind. When things are wet, they get damaged. Just like your hair. When your hair is wet, that's when you're going to do damage to it. When your paper's wet, that's when it has a possibility for damage. So uh, keep that in mind when you're going to go at it with something sharp like a pencil or a pen. And pencils are great. Colored pencils, even inexpensive budget pencils are great for just deepening those shadows those, brightening those highlights, um, they're going to get the job done. Prismacolor is a good one for this. Derwent Chromaflow is a good one for this. Derwent Colorsoft is a good one. But even if you're on a budget, Brute Funer makes some really good ones that, uh, like the Brute Funer Macaron colors are great for those pale, pale colors. Um, yeah, you, you don't, where you're just going in and deepening, you don't need to go buy top of the line, expensive, expensive stuff. Um, anything's going to do the trick. Probably Crayola will do the trick. I don't have any Crayolas to test, but I think it would do the trick. But there you have it. I really had a good time doing this painting. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. And if you'd like to learn this in real time, you can check it out in Critique Club. Link is in the video description. Thank you so much for watching today. Until next time, happy crafting.